Hello, everybody. Welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us for our championship review for round 39. We are in the midst of the mental Easter weekend, so we're on a little bit of a different schedule. And um, my thought was get this review done and try and get Sunday a little bit clear. So um, that's what we're doing. We're going early on this one. Hopefully, we'll still have um, plenty of people joining in and commenting on what we're saying. And then maybe we'll have more people watching after the fact. But this is the plan. And I am fully um, aware of the fact that we do still have one game to play. So if you are watching after the fact, um, Huddersfield and Brentford play at 12.30 today. It's currently 10 a.m. Um, and I'll be covering that later on today. So we kind of got everything um, covered with this one. So 11 games yesterday, one today, and then that is round 39 done. And then, of course, we're straight in with the preview on Sunday morning. I think you get where we are with all this. That is your results ticking along the bottom. As ever, we will go from top to bottom. We're going to look at every single game. And I want to get your comments on all of the action yesterday. And of course, then at the end, I need your goal of the round and your team of the round. And yes, I understand two teams haven't played yet. But hey, you try and cope with this schedule. Um, let me know that you can see me, hear me, loudly and clearly get involved as we go. First of all, let's say a big thank you to Russ, who is our fan sponsor for the Review Show, fan and our friend, despite Ben's terrible taste in football teams. Thank you so much to Russ, great supporter of the channel. He got involved over on Patreon. You can do the same over there. Um, get in now, always on Patreon. Um, start of the month is when to sign up, so go for it there. You can also get involved via Super Chat at any point in this broadcast, first super chat becomes the king of the bin. And for the princely sum of absolutely nothing, hit that thumbs up button if you're watching on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. Subscribe, ring the bell as we close in, hopefully by the end of Easter weekend, around the 15,000 subscriber mark. We are doing great. And here are your results down there. Now we'll say hello in the comments in just a second. But let's go to the split screen, and there is round 39. I'll read it from the screen. I know you've got the ticker going as well. Bournemouth 3, Borough 1, Bristol City 0, Stoke 2, Cardiff 0, Forest 1, Derby 2, Luton 0, Millwall 1, Rotherham 0, Preston 1, Norwich 1, QPR 3, Coventry 0, Watford 1, Sheffield Wednesday, nil. Wickham, one. Blackburn, nil. Barnsley, one. Reading, one. Birmingham, one. Swansea, nil. With Huddersfield and Brentford still to play. I've underlined a few teams in green and a few teams in red. So I think you had a really good weekend if you're a Watford fan, a Birmingham fan, a Bournemouth fan, and Forest and Derby. I think you had a bad weekend. If you're a Swansea fan, a Coventry fan, or a Rotherham fan, welcome one and all, though. And um, let's just quickly say hello in the comments. Um, and then we will get into it. Richard, uh, Gordon, a couple of happy Birmingham fans. Noah, a QPR fan. Uh, James, um, a confused Norwich fan. Understandable. Uh, Annie, welcome. Uh, John, another happy Birmingham fan. There we go. Uh, Mr. E, Rose, Chris, uh, Max, a happy Watford fan. There we go. We've got some shiny happy people, as REM would say. Gaza from Millwall, Jay, Birmingham, Alistair, Reading, Gordon, we've said hello to. Uh, Jamie, um, looking at Brentford. Well, we'll look at that. <laughs> we will look at the home form table. Uh, there we go. I think a uh, hello to Richard and hello to George as well. Let's go to game number one at the top of the table. It was Norwich 1, sorry, Preston 1, Norwich 1. 
get it the right way around. And the narrative around this game was all really to do with um, who wasn't going to be playing for Norwich. Um, first world problems for our friends at the top of the table. They've got too many international players, basically. Um, and the scheduling, well, scheduling didn't help anybody um, this weekend or indeed this season. So Norwich having to go with a pretty inexperienced, well, backline. Um, but still a very, very good front four. However, the narrative at the end of this game is Norwich didn't drop points here because of their inexperienced backline. Um, it was a little bit different to that and a frustrating afternoon for fans of the Canaries. I mean, they're still, you know, just a few points away from pretty much guaranteeing promotion. But um, two straight draws now and... Um, some Watford fans are getting a bit excited as the gap has dropped by four points over the last two games. So for Norwich, Krilling goal. Mumba plays right back. No Aarons. Here we go. Omar Bamideli plays centre-back. Zimmerman out for the season. Gibson out for the season. Uh, Hanley had played for Scotland as well, so he's probably knackered. Uh, Janoulis, don't know where he is, uh, so Quintia plays. I mean... Look, Krull, Hanley, Quinty are decent players and obviously some inexperience on the other side. Um, but we we know with Norwich and we know with Farker, it's um, the impact of Aaron's and every attack starts from, you know, those centre-half positions and the high fullback. So it is, um, does unbalance the team, doesn't it? Uh, McLean and Sorensen, Skip, played for the 21s, didn't he, for... England. Um, however, still, look at the front four. Uh, Cantwell, Dowell, Buendia, Puki. So still very, very strong up the top end. Probably, um, well, given stick Buendia and Puki in any front four, and you can argue it's um, up there, can't you? Uh, for Preston, Iverson, Vandenberg, Story, Lindsay, Hughes, Barkhausen, Ledson, Sinclair. Interesting shape there for um, Preston uh, under Frankie McAvoy. Remember Alex Neal all down there. Daniel Johnson off Ched Evans and Emil Reese um, starting up top for Preston. Here are the goals. What a goal this is by um, Buendir. I mean, you know, rinse, repeat. We're bored of talking about him. Um, he's really good. <laughs> uh, on the left foot here, curls that one into the corner. Great goal by Buendir. As I say, I'm not there's not much point me saying what we've all said a million times about this player in in this division so I won't great goal by Buendia and then Tamu Puki who we've all, all always praised as a brilliant finisher should score about five goals in between um that Norwich goal and the Preston equalizer he doesn't and you can see from the situation there how on earth um, Brad Potts manages to get that in. Uh, hits the shot on the turn. 94 minutes, I think. Big deflection as well on the way through. And um, for once in the championship under Farker, a tight game goes against um, Norwich. Let's have a look at the numbers and you'll see how frustrating an afternoon it was. Just go down to big chances. Five big chances for Norwich. And just the one goal. Puki also hits the crossbar as well. I mean, if they play that game 100 times, they win it 99 times, don't they? Also, if they play that game with Max Aarons and Ollie Skip, they probably win it as well. So um, not necessarily too much to worry about in terms of Norwich. I mean, yeah, first world problems when you're worrying about, you know, you can't beat Reading's 106-point record and you've got too many international players. But still... Um, you don't want the season to um, plateau, which I don't think it will, to be honest. But 84 points from 39. So they're still miles ahead of the two points per game, which traditionally wins the title, doesn't it? Um, in terms of the 100 points for Norwich, uh, the projection has dropped below it now um, on the points per game. So seven remaining. They need 16 points from the seven games, that's five wins, one draw um, and a defeat uh, would do it for Norwich. They do have to go 
um, against Bournemouth, Watford and Barnsley, I believe, between now and the end of the season. So um, they they basically can't afford to drop off too much if they want to get the 100 points. Um, the gap, though, for Norwich is it has gone up by a point. So big picture, um, not a bad day for the Canaries because they're 15 points clear of um, Swansea, who have eight to play. However, Brentford, uh, with a win, would close that gap um, to 14. But it was 14 um, at the start of play this weekend. So it's it's not all bad for Norwich to get their players back. I, I haven't looked ahead. I don't know who they're playing on, on Monday. So it'll all be, it'll be fine. And Preston, well... They needed a point, didn't they? A um, good start for Frankie McAvoy. On to 45. Uh, 45 to survive. We've said many, many times, we think it may be higher this season, although um, we'll we'll see what Coventry and Rotherham do now. Interesting. I'm now talking about Coventry and Rotherham, not Birmingham and Rotherham. Um, let's have a look at your comments on that one. Uh, da, 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 da. Where shall I go from? Uh, Richard, uh, always disappointed to drop two points so late on. Would have taken the point before the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, all in, it's it's no no bad thing, um, isn't it? <laughs> it's this Watford narrative. Look, we get the win at Borough, put the pressure on Norwich with a three-point gap. Um it is what it is, isn't it? I always say about the championship title, um, it's great, but just get up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm sure if you told every manager in the championship, you're going to finish 20 points um, behind first place in second, but you're going up. Uh, they'd all take it, wouldn't they? Um, when Deer got taken off injured. Oh, dear. Um, I hope he's OK. Been an amazing player this season. Hasn't he? Uh, I think the youngsters had a great game for Norwich. We've already seen Mumba make an assist this season. Uh, a solid 90 minutes. Bright pro- bright prospects. There you go. Um, good point for Preston. I still don't think they, they're they out of the relegation fight. Um, but, John, you've, you've made the point there. Um, if all down the bottom pick up a few more wins, it's not going to happen, is it? You're, you're needing three or four teams that all rise at the same time. I cannot. See it. Ah, Huddersfield next. There you go. Uh, some encouragement for Preston. We'll be interested to see if McAvoy uh, sticks with that formation or constantly chops and changes. Um, there we go. Um, is McAvoy a candidate for the permanent job? I wouldn't have thought so. So, um, But we will, we will see. Um, right. Let's move on uh, to Watford, who um, I'm going to say it in the words of the Bee Gees, you win again. Uh, Watford have timed this um, really, really nicely, this run. A sixth straight victory for Norwich. It felt like, uh, sorry, for Watford, it felt like Norwich had had a decisive run, won nine on the trot, didn't they? Um, Perhaps Watford are doing the same thing. And given um, events with Swansea, um, it's going to be a good weekend again, um, for Watford, isn't it? But while well, they keep winning, no one else can do anything about it. And that home form, Jesus Christ, we'll look at the home table in isolation, but Watford's home form is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, Backman in goal, Firmina, Ekon, Sierra Alta, Messina, uh, nice and steady. Zinkenagel, Hughes, Chalaba, Saar, Success, and Jao Pedro. So no Sema up top otherwise um looking looking strong uh their Watford solid um same system same players same results they keep winning don't they um for Wednesday Wildsmith Ergahi Lees Burner Reach Patterson Pelupesi Hutchison Bannon Rhodes and Windass early goal in this one um a kind of controversial kind of not really uh because uh Ismail Assar um, who can just <laughs> conjure a goal from out of his backside, frankly, can't he? Gets it on the right-hand side, crosses it in low. And we've seen this so many times this season with Saar. Um, success is there. I think success is offside, but Lees um, puts the ball into his own net. And, of course, the laws as they're written now, 
um, literally specify a player is not active and until he touches the ball. We have these ridiculous situations where a player is like miles offside. The linesman knows, everybody knows, everyone in England knows, and then they wait and wait and wait, and he thinks, Can I, shall, I, shall I chance it? Touches the ball and up goes the flag. So um, it is what it is. And I think we all know if Lees doesn't play the ball, uh, success is offside and you can't touch it. You'd have to jump over it. So um, there be the 2021 offside law. But that's the only goal in the game. And Watford do it yet again. Uh, a sixth straight victory for Shisco and Watford. And I believe, um, I can scroll back and look, but someone will correct me. Is it like 10 in 11 for Watford now? It's just stunning form. Um, tight game. Look, two shots to one on target. One big chance apiece. Wednesday, 4-4-1 to 4-1-3 in terms of the um, passes completed as well. It does feel like Watford with um, Ekong and Sieralta and Firmina and um, Messina, it feels like uh, their ability to absorb pressure and not lose and, you know, win one nil at home is really standing them in great stead here. So there is the table. The lead is now nine points for Watford. Uh, they have seven to play. Swansea have eight to play. Of course, um, we're contractually obliged to mention Watford's last two games are against Brentford and Swansea. Of course, if they've got a four or a six point lead there, um, you would strongly, strongly, strongly fancy them because they just need draws um, towards the end. Well, any lead and they just need draws. You know what I'm saying, though, don't you? Um, so Brentford, a win for Brentford at Huddersfield at 12.30 um, means it's an eight-point gap with eight to go. They're still very, very strongly positioned. Watford, and I will just do it because we always do. Look at that home form. 50 points now up at home for Watford. Uh, sensational. So Watford, basically, if they didn't play a single away game, would survive in the in the um, championship with eight games to or seven games to go. Uh, Wednesday, eek. Uh, 32 from 38. And with Birmingham winning, the tide has risen. Uh, Coventry are now in the hot seat, but they're seven points ahead of Wednesday. That is the gap Wednesday are looking at. Seven points with eight games to play. Let's have a look at your comments. Uh, what are we saying here? Uh, Watford, a nicely placed, hitting form at the right time. But bear in mind the features they have coming up. True, true. We we all um, look at um, position of teams playing, but that works in reverse. Watford is a hard game for whoever they're playing on form, uh, one of the hardest in the league. So, um, yes, we know um, difficult games for Watford, but, well, We'll see. It's a big gap is is all we will say on that. And Swansea are trending badly downwards and Brentford, well, we'll see. Um, if Brentford draw today, you would argue that they're both trending downwards whilst Watford are trending up. So uh, the run-in may not matter because it only matters if either Brentford or Swansea pick up some wins. Classic example of a good team winning a tight game. Agreed. Um, table doesn't lie. Norwich and Watford have been the best two teams this season. That auto race is done. Best winning streak since Graham Taylor's 82-83 top flight season. Always good for a mention uh, for Graham Taylor. Uh, Norwich v Watford. Um, I, I still I don't think Watford will catch Norwich, but um, but yeah, it'll be fun. It you know it's a fun narrative, especially if uh, Norwich uh, draw again. Uh, might not be the rules, but if success wasn't there, would Leeds have been under pressure to play the ball? Uh, um, Lees has got to not be influenced by an offside player. So um, that's, I'm afraid, Richard, I, I know where you're coming from, but that's on him, isn't it? And um, yeah, it's a, you call it what you like, a, a loophole. Um, same for everybody, isn't it? Everyone can stand somebody offside and then it's up to, um, and you've got to give Sar some credit as well because he, um, he he really stitches defences up. Um uh, what else are we saying here? It feels like Wednesday is slowly improving despite losing. Still a chance for them. 
Only if Rotherham and Coventry collapse. Yeah, agree. And it would need um, quite a nice run, wouldn't it? Uh, if Watford continue this winning run through their difficult fixtures, they will catch Norwich and Munoz will be manager of the year. <laughs> I guess he, I guess he will, yeah. Uh, Wednesday are playing for more, but it doesn't help. He was absolutely... Oh, was he? I, I didn't realise that. Uh, Watford are definitely joining Norwich for promotion. Um, I think Norwich and Watford will score about the same points from the rest of the year, but I think it'll be about that, won't it? Um, anything else... Um, uh, Wednesday are pretty much gone now. Watford pretty much up now. Um, in my opinion, the top two is now sorted. Swansea and Brentford can't cope. Well, we'll find out at 12.30 how Brentford are going to cope with the pressure. Look, is it really ability to cope with the pressure, Ridley, or is it, as as we say every season, teams coming down with Premier League squads should be doing this, shouldn't they, given the um, FFP parachute world that we we live in now, you know, you can, you can point fingers at Brent. Look, I know Swansea have had parachutes, but of course they've got owners um, not like Norwich and uh, Watford's that um, set the team up to actually use the advantage well. So um, there we go. Right. I'm still standing on the piano. For a I need to get an, an amp for it. It's, um, it's a highfalutin expensive thing, but it doesn't have inbuilt speakers as highfalutin expensive synthesizers don't. Right. Let's talk about Swansea. And um, did I get all of these results right in my predictions? I'm sure I predicted Preston and Norwich draw, Watford uh, to beat Sheffield Wednesday and Birmingham to beat Swansea. I played my joker on Birmingham, didn't I? And I've got it right. And it is um, in the same way Brentford did um, earlier. Um, when was it? Six weeks ago or something. Three straight defeats for Swansea. Ouch. But we shouldn't make this all about Swansea because Lee Bowyer has got six points in two home games, which is um, great news for Birmingham and bad news for Coventry and Rotherham as well. So there are very, very much two sides to this story. Um, there are your teams. So Bowyer matches up. Um, he goes three at the back. And we said this about Birmingham. Uh, just keep it simple. Can't do much between now and the end of the season in terms of changing the pattern of play. Um, remove the risks. Make yourself hard to play against. We're seeing long throw-ins go in the box. Jukovic back in the team. And it's working, isn't it? It's, we said about these players, they should be able to um, carry this, shouldn't they? Um, Etheridge in goal. Roberts, Dean, Pedersen. Seddon plays at wing-back. I didn't notice that. Uh, Colin the other side. Gardner, Sanjic, Halilovic, Leko, Jukovic. Uh, for Swans, Woodman, Norton, Bennett, Gway, uh, Roberts and Bidwell. Uh, someone double check me on this. I believe now Roberts is the only outfield player to have played every minute for his club this season. Um, says a lot about the schedule, doesn't it? We normally get a few. Uh, Smith, Grimes, Fulton, Ayu and uh, Lowe. No Hurahan starting for Swansea. And look, you know my feelings on penalties. We jumped the shark now. I'm fed up of the outrage on all of them. I'll put them up. I'm not. I'm not debating them. It's just boring now after um, so many this season. Here's another one. Look, ball bouncing in the box, and um, unfortunately, we know now that's Roberts gets there slightly behind Leko. We know now that if there's a ball bouncing in the box, if you're the attacking player and you raise your foot up to play the ball, and the defending player kicks your foot, we now know that that is a penalty, and we've seen it several times. Um, I don't like it, but I'm not going to debate it. Um, I think we've now lost sight of the fact that a penalty is about a player being impeded and it's literally now a, a kick on the foot. And, you know, does it stop Leko particularly doing much? I don't think so. But we've seen several given. So at least we can argue there's some consistency with this bouncing ball and get your foot up there and hope someone kicks you is the thing. Rubbish penalty, though, by... Jukovic straight down the middle and Woodman just has to um, turn his right leg inside and uh, let the ball hit him, doesn't he? And then at the end, here we go again, penalty number two. By the way, I hope all the people that were saying um, that Steve Cooper and Swansea were part of a conspiracy to give them penalties are similarly outraged about these penalties being given against Swansea here. Dander, well, he slips over, doesn't he? You can see the contact on the back foot. Um, 
Honestly, I mean, look, take it from Sunic's point of view. You're running into the box and you tripped over. Um, it's an infuriating one. Does he slide through and foul him? No. Does he slip over? Does he touch him? I don't know. Uh, as I say, I can't be bothered with all the outrage. Um, it's it's too much for my blood pressure to have outraged people over over every. Put it this way: if that wasn't given, people would be outraged. If that was, people are outraged, and that's where we are with penalties now in 2021. The standard has dropped so low for a penalty now that uh, people do think that these should be given, and um, that's where we are. So I'll say no more. Hogan, brother. Uh, sticks that in the corner with his right foot under pressure and he does the job and under pressure Swansea are not doing the job three straight defeats there are the numbers and of course okay the penalties skew the underlying stats don't they um, I, I know some people do XG and big chances with and without penalties so you include in the penalties it looks good for Birmingham otherwise it's tight isn't it uh, three shots to four on target uh, 57 43 on the possession but let's get out of the um whys and wherefores and look at the table and look at that in the last three games clear as day in that table zero points for Swansea nine for Watford a nine point swing over three games and Swansea trending downwards and um we did say this before this bad run. It had been fine, fine margins and it had been predicting something like this happening and it's happened. And now at Swansea, I mean, look, they look nailed on for playoffs minimum, but they're going to need a big, big turnaround to get up and challenge. And you can now start to see with about eight or nine games to go, the goal scored as well. And look, Watford have got 11 more. Norwich have got 12 more. Brentford have got 20 more. You're starting to see now where the, you know, where the fine margins are. And, um, you know, playing tight and winning tight is great when it's happening, but it is hard to sustain. Um, get your comments in on Swansea. Birmingham, brilliant. Six points in three games. And you know me, I'm very consistent with this. Two points per game over any sample size bigger than two games is worth having. And they've done it over a sample size of three games, and especially if you're down the bottom there. So Birmingham go to 41 with seven games to play. A point per game now for Birmingham between now and the end of the season takes them to 48. Can you see um, three teams? Uh, sorry. Well, can you see the two teams immediately below Birmingham? Both scoring more than 48 points? I'll leave that with you. I don't think so. Uh, so Birmingham are in good nick. And of course, we must make mention of Rotherham. Two home games against Coventry and Birmingham coming up. Some big old games um, happening. But uh, Birmingham must be very, very happy with that. Because look, underneath them, Coventry lost, Rotherham lost, Wednesday lost. Um Huddersfield play Brentford later, so it could be everybody around Birmingham lose and Birmingham win. Right. Uh, let's have a look at your comments um, here. Uh, what are we saying? Uh, there. We'll start there. Um, six points from Reading, Watford and Swansea. Great return. Never a for the second one. Uh, Juke missed four of his last five. Uh, Christ was why he took the first close game. Feel we did enough. Uh, Swans all at sea need to get their heads right for a playoff scrap. Well, there you go. You don't want to be trending downwards at this point in the season. Uh, but you work well with the players and change things. Like I said, you mad thing from the game. Both were soft pens. Uh, Juki's pen was shocking, wasn't it? Jest. Uh, Birmingham are masters of surviving in this league. Can't disagree with that. They always do it, don't they? Um, what else have we got? Yeah, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, half of the penalties I see now, I don't agree with. Oh, I totally agree, Ridley. So I, I don't know where we've gone. Don't know where we've gone with this. There we go. Like I say, Richard, I hope the people who were so outraged that Swansea being given 
um, some soft penalties, are equally outraged on their behalf when they're given against them. It is, um, yeah, farce is the right word, isn't it, Lewis? Uh, Swansea aren't looking like major threats to it. No, I agree with that, James. Um, a couple of months ago, yeah. Um, well, and you wouldn't want to play them in the playoffs either because they look, you know, look just like horrible to play against. This is what happened to Forest last season, I have to say. I'm not saying Swansea are going to dip all the way out to seventh, but Forest were the team up there who were getting by on being tight and winning 1 0. And it sounds really over simplistic of me to say, but scoring goals is a big deal in, in football. And if, um, if it's fine margins and you're not necessarily able to look at like a Norwich or a Brentford who create like 15 chances a game, don't know, 15 shots on goal a game. So, yeah. Uh, both penalty decisions correct by 2021 standards. Yeah, any other year. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Agreed. Can't do a Birmingham review without doing a friend. There it is. Uh, Boya has simply got Birmingham playing solid. Shows how much Karanka had lost his way. Penalties a bit soft. Karma. Everyone's bringing up Karma and Swansea now, isn't it? Um, Swansea could be 10 winless. Wow. Um, there we go. Uh, let's not forget the penalty is a free shot, a goal with a 90 90- 77% chance of scoring uh, Ridley. Um, they should be given um, a goal. Yeah, I agree. It needs to be said. It does feel like now you're given... I agree with you. I'm being pedantic about the percentage chance of scoring. Um, but, yeah, it feels like you're giving someone a massive chance on goal, the biggest you can get. Um, well, we'll talk about Lucas Shaw in a minute. Um, and for not very much. So, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Uh, Swan's been poor last two months. Um, loads and loads of comments on this. Um, so uh, thank you, everyone. We'll, we'll, we'll move on, but brilliant uh, debate on um, on this one. <laughs> it evens itself out over Cleve. Do you know what that actually means, Alex? It evens itself out. That actually means everyone gets crap decisions. That's what that means, doesn't it? It doesn't even itself out, but you know that everyone will get a crappy, arguable, marginal decision go against them. Let me put the banner back up. I took it off so we could put um, Ivan Sunjic's feet and Jan Danda's feet on there. Right. Um, well done, Birmingham, anyway. So um, let's just have a look at the table. Brentford, Huddersfield next. We'll quickly just say, so Brentford win, puts them eight off Watford, a draw. They go above Swans on goal difference. And uh, we're talking about playoff positions and my new show is too early for that. Now, Brentford defeat, and there's a big sense that both Swansea and Brentford are trending down at the worst possible time. In terms of Huddersfield, the win would put them 45 to survive on the 10-year average with um, uh, they will then have eight to play a defeat for Huddersfield. Um, and it does make it your perfect weekend for Birmingham and Derby down at the bottom there. Right. Who is next? Uh, it is Barnsley 1, Reading 1, which we did at the end of the Superstream as a watch-along. Um, a thoroughly entertaining watch, this one. It was 1-1, um, and it was proper championship carnage, this game, wasn't it? Brilliant stuff. It ends 1-1, but um, it could have been 3-3, um, let's just say. Uh, there are your teams. Collins, Solbauer, Helic, Anderson, Styles, Britton, Moat, Palmer, Adabi, Ajo, Frieser, Woodrow for Barnsley. Reading, Raphael Gibson Moore, Morrison returns and then goes off with ice on his thigh. Uh, Yidem, Rinomoto, Lauren, Ejaria, Elise, Maite, Zhao. And yeah, some fun and games in this one. Get your comments in if you were watching or you were watching with me. Uh, great goal by Ovi Ejaria. Um, a couple of things to say about this one. He's going to slot that with his right foot from there. Um, the first thing to say is how two-footed he was. Brilliant first touch with the left foot, finish with the right foot. OK, you should say every pro footballer should be able to do that finish with his weak foot. But having just controlled the ball full on the run, it's a great goal. And the other thing is textbook how to play against the um, uh, incessant press like Barnsley's. Because if you wind it back a bit, Raphael, they all come, as we know Barnsley do, plays it through the lines, Rinomota, turn, early outside to in run and you beat the high line you beat the press in two passes um okay there's a lot of quality attached and easier said than done but 
great example of how it's done most effectively. Um, then, uh, penalty. I think we're all okay with this one, weren't we? Yidem does have his right arm um, around Styles, and there does seem to be some kind of a of a pull. He tries to be clever, Yidem. He does it well. The ball's right up in the air. So um, uh, who was it? it? Was Eltringham? I think he got it right, didn't he? Um, and look, compared to you know one of these rubbish ones like the one uh, Roberts on Lecco, where feet dangling and little touch is way more of a penalty than that was, um, isn't it? So there you go. Up steps Moa right through Raphael. Not a great penalty, but hey. What's the definition of a great penalty? Either goes in or it doesn't, doesn't it? So let's be binary about it. And I'm always railing against that. And then, look, I don't want to pile in, but I've got to put this on the screen. This is 18 goal, Lucas Zhao. Uh, don't don't worry about how it got there, but he's going to miss that. And he's not only going to miss it, he's going to miss it on the far post, not the near post. Just um, incredibly um, managing to miss that. And also... Maite missed a huge chance in the first half and there was a kind of softish backing in decision given DK on Raphael. It was chaos, absolute chaos. Championship at its um, most chaotic and you love to see it, don't you? Um, what you would say if you're a Barnsley fan is that Reading only had one shot on target. What you would say if you're a Reading fan is Reading definitely um, could have scored three goals quite easily if Maite and um, uh, Zhao had taken their huge chances. So, look, tight game. Both sides will make arguments for their team. I just think with the the state of the chances that Reading had, I think you'd probably be a happy Barnsley fan with 1-1 at the end. It was crazy, wasn't it? And Barnsley hold fifth position, 65 points. Um, Reading, 63 and Bournemouth will be very happy with that. It's another prediction I got right as well. I said this one a bit draw, didn't I? Uh, so um, Bournemouth will be happy. Look at that now. A Bournemouth win in their game in hand, and they will go above both Barnsley and Reading in those playoff positions. It's very, very tight. And just look at the last five games for each. Barnsley, eight points, okay. Um, may or may not be enough if you extrapolate that over the last games. Reading, um, six points over the last five games. Probably not going to do. They need a they need a trend up points per game wise over the next five to hold that playoff position that they've been in for so long this season. Uh, good to see um, managers arguing. It's tremendous, wasn't it? Ishmael was furious, wasn't he? Um, uh, feels like a defeat for Reading. Terrible from Jao, stupid from Yidem, and the Maite miss as well. We'll now probably have to get something at Watford and or Norwich not to slip up. Easier said than done. Uh, the Jao miss costing Reading two points, cost Reading the plus. Possibly, possibly. I hate to put it down to moments like that, but um, yeah, it was a massive, massive chance. Um, Edward, stop writing the same comment or I'll put you in timeout. You're going to fake news Simbin. I've read it. I don't need to read it eight times. Uh, who was the fullback Maite beating the challenge for the miss? Um, I think it was Star. I can't remember. I can't remember. Hell of a miss anyway. Uh, that's a good result uh, regarding we have a better run in the... Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Lucas, yeah, weekend got worse. Uh, you <laughs> stop it. Stop it. An exciting game, finishing with a result that doesn't really do much for either team. Yeah, and you've just said that, other than Bournemouth. We'll talk about Bournemouth. Um, deserved draw. Barnsley had a... Did it cross the line, George? It may not have been a foul, but I'm not sure it crossed the line, did it? Um, still in shock at that Zhao miss. Huge in the context as Bournemouth will replace one of those two in the playoffs. Incredible. Um, two huge points dropped for Reading, given the Zhao miss. Unbelievable scenes. Anything else here? Uh, the referee was the one that said, "Oh, don't talk about Eltringham." Yeah, he's he's um he's had a few um, interesting decisions. Anderson, there you go. Not Stars. Yeah, he's normally too strong in the challenge, isn't he? Um, there you go. Let's talk about Bournemouth then. Bournemouth three, Borough one, and this is it was a perfect weekend for Bournemouth. Cardiff lost. We'll talk about that next. And Barnsley and Reading drew and both dropped points. And, of course, Bournemouth 
themselves won. So a great weekend for Bournemouth. And we're talking about um, points accumulation, 10 points in the last five for Bournemouth. So their trend upwards at the moment it is looking like that supersedes one of Reading or Barnsley. Of course, that can also change. It was Woodgate against his old club and the old master, Warnock and Woodgate's gets one over him here. Uh, there's your teams. Begovic, Smith, Carter, Vickers, Cook, Rico, Lerma, Wilshire, Dan Juma, Billing, Stanislas and Solanke for the Cherries. And for Borough, Bettinelli, Fisher, Hall, McNair, Boller, Mendes, Morsi, House and Balassi. What more? Cabano. So, <laughs> Warnock, he's been critical of his strikers. He's just bombed them all out now. He's just playing a load of wingers um, up top. Here are the goals. Um, Phil Billings um, highlight reel will be good this season. Another good goal here. A nice flick over the top by Dan Juma and Billing half follies that one in with the left foot down into the corner. Great goal by Watmore. Um, he spins away and how he finds um, the gap, I think, through Cook and then right into the corner past Begovic. Great goal by Watmore for 1-1. One, one. Muggy old deflection here, a bit like the Norwich one wasn't it? Um, a different angle, I guess. But Lerma, he hits it straight at um, who is five, uh, Morsi. Um, and it deflects back to uh, Bettinelli's right and into the corner. And Dom Solanke, it's poor defending because you see Hall and McNair. They've both stood and watch him take the first shot. Um, Bettinelli saves and then he comes back in to pop the rebound, a touch and pop the rebound in as well. So not great defending by Borough. And that could be that for any possible faint playoff hopes Borough had. Uh, look at the numbers, five shots on target to one, four, four, seven to two, eight, seven on the um, passes and no big chances for um, Borough. Does sound like a viable win for Bournemouth. Um, based on those numbers. Burridge has been too inconsistent, haven't they? You can see three defeats in the last five. I bet if you wind it back, they've probably won five and lost five of the last 10 or something um, close to that. So Borough are seven points off the playoffs at the moment. Of course, if Bournemouth were to win their game in hand, they would be nine points off with eight to go. Um, it would take a collapse from... Uh, Barnsley or Reading um, and Borough. I don't know. What are we? Seven games from the end. Um, let's say, what, five wins and two draws be 17 points. I need to take them to 73 as well. So it does look like uh, Borough are possibly out of it now. Uh, Bournemouth looking good. Like we said, perfect weekend. Cardiff and Borough lost, uh, obviously by definition, because Bournemouth beat Borough. And the draw above them, Barnsley and Reading, could get even better if Brentford don't win, where they're literally, um, it would only be Watford and Bournemouth winning in the top, um, God, the top nine in the league. Uh, let's have a look at your comments on that one. Uh, Warnock will rebuild the Middlesbrough team. You'd think they'd get better next season, wouldn't you? Uh, I think Bournemouth will get top six now. Decent bet to win the playoffs. Reserve the right to change my mind. After. <laughs> Absolutely, you do. I do. Uh, get that feeling Bournemouth coming good at the right time in the playoffs. Uh, squad quality will tell. Let, and that would be three relegated teams possibly going back up. Um, there you go. Brentford to win the playoffs. Have to fancy Bournemouth to get in the playoffs and win them. Uh, Woodgate's doing better than I expected. There you go, Chris. Uh, Self-aware football fan. Um, uh, won't be long before he's playing youngsters. Um I turn it on just after buying the game. As soon as I turn it on, we're 1-0 down. We're out of it. No good, Alfie. No good, eh? Uh, right, let's move on. Cardiff nil, Forest 1. I predicted a low-scoring draw. But, um, I mean, it's not doom and gloom yet for Cardiff. Um, however, feels quite decisive for Forest. I think they've reached uh, 45 now. 45 to survive. Um, so good win for Forrest going off to Cardiff. I think Cardiff won these teams where their away record is better than their home record. I think we'll bring it up in a minute. Um, and Forrest get the win. You love to look at that one shot on target. 
Love to see it from Hewton, don't you? Um, Hewton versus McCarthy. Classic. Uh, so there's your card of team. Phillips, Nelson, Flint, Brown, Rules, Sang, Pack, Volks, Bakuna, Wilson, Moore. Uh, for Forrest, Samba, Christy Worrell, McKenna, Blackett, Yates, Garner, Amiobi, Cafu, Mighton, and Graben. Um, and here is the goal. A uh, good goal, actually. Christy down the right-hand side. Um, crosses it in. Garner. And look at that. That is a Chris Hewton team. One, two, three, four, five in the box. So whatever we say about one shot on target, five in the box for that attack and the fullback crossing it in. Good finish by Garner, who um, is garnering far more game time and um, just looks a better fit at Forest than he did. OK, the whole Ibich thing was a bit of a car crash, wasn't it, for, for Watford? It didn't work there, but working well. And I think Garner is going to be quite sought after as a lone player in the championship next season. Uh, let's have a look at the numbers and the tables. Get your comments in on Cardiff and Forrest. So 18 shots for Cardiff, only three on target. One shot on target for Forrest. This classic Hewton, isn't it? No big chances and they get the win. We knew exactly this type of game was going to happen. So tight um, and often with Hewton and McCarthy, he who gets in front first. Uh, win. So what does Mick say? He who blinks first loses. Um, moreover, and he's totally right, isn't he? Uh, Forrest, um, let's not be too smug about it, but we all predicted that this would happen, that they would dip in the difficult run of fixtures and they will now trend upwards. I didn't expect it to start this week. I thought maybe they might get a draw, but four points in the last two, and I think the fixtures open out a little bit more. So I suspect Forrest will be I would say comfortably over 50, but they're definitely going over 50 in the next, um, well, in the remaining seven games for sure, aren't they? Cardiff are still in it, aren't they? Um, they're four points off Bournemouth, five off Reading and seven off Barnsley. I suppose the scenario for Cardiff is if you think Bournemouth have got that um, quality still left over from the Premier League, Cardiff are going to want a double slip from Barnsley and Reading, aren't they? And uh, can Mick and Kiefer Moore and Harry Wilson and some of their extra quality um, override the good work that Barnsley and Reading have done? We will see. They're not out of it yet. But as I said about Cardiff, uh, sorry, as I said about Borough, uh, to get anywhere near low 70s, it's got to be two points per game for the rest of the season, hasn't it? That will only get them to 72. And we know competence from the three above them should make them higher than that. But hey-ho, we will see. What are you saying in the comments? Owen, uh, what a win for us. I think two or three more draws, we say. Yeah, I think I think they're, I think they're safe. Targeting 14th a place. Um, uh, what are we saying on Forest and Cardiff? Uh all but confirmed safe to funny. Yeah, I think they're I think they're all good, aren't they? Uh Spanner in the works. Didn't expect Forrest to score, let alone win. Uh, they've lost the last couple of home games. Yeah, difficult games though. Um, weren't they? Uh Forrest improving. Cardiff not played well in five. Starting with the hardest. It was our fault, wasn't it, Chris? Watching on the um watching on the watch along. Uh wins have dried up for Cardiff. We'll miss out on the playoffs. Possibly, yeah, possibly. Um, went on that huge splurge of wins under Mick. And what did someone say? The manager converting to from part-time to full-time contract curse. There we go. We love a good curse. Millwall one, Rotherham nil. Get your comments in. Millwall one, Rotherham nil. Three wins in four for Millwall, who are chasing potentially a third, eighth place um, finish in the past four seasons, which um, compared to spend and status, and I know people don't like it when you talk about club size, get very emotional about it. That's excellent if Mill will do that, isn't it? It really is. Um, and they beat Rotherham. Now, obviously, big implications with Rotherham and relegation pitcher here as well. Um, get your thoughts in on this one. Uh, Bialkowski in goal and playing very well from what we hear. Uh, for Millwall, Hutchison, Wallace, Cooper, Malone, McNamara, Evans, Woods, Mitchell, Bennett, Wallace. For Rotherham, Johansson, Hequa, Wood, McDonald, Barlasser, 
Harding, Giles, Crooks, Wing, Smith, Ladapo, and a couple of key decisions in this one because we have a red card and then we have a missed penalty. Um, let's find the right picture. That's Cardiff, isn't it? I need to go to... Where do I need to go? I need to go to Millwall. There we go. I've given away the Wallace goal there. So there's the red card. No one had too many complaints there. You can see Wood, um, arm on the back, and then I think the legs clash as well. Um, and down goes Wallace. Obvious goal-scoring opportunity, yes. Um, so uh, red card um, for Wood. Does he get three games now? Anyone smarten me up in the chat on that one? Great goal by Wallace. Look at that for some technique. A slice volley to Johansson's left into the corner of the net. What a goal um, by Wallace. He can turn it on, can't he? However, with 10 men, and we saw Rotherham do great things with 10 men and win at Sheffield Wednesday, didn't we? Um, bit of a muggy penalty. Uh, who is that going down? Is it Smith? Murray Wallace is, is there. Um, we said about the... Um, Sterling and Hellick penalty for England the other day. The order of things with a penalty. Order. Order. What was that guy's name? Order. Um, the order of penalties should be tackle goes in, contact is made, player goes down. We're now seeing with a lot of penalties, player goes down, tackle is made, contact occurs. I'm not going to moan anymore about penalties, but it's very vexing for me. Anyway, Bielkowski makes the save from Smith, not quite in the corner, but Big Bart gets down well to his right and saves it. Big moment that, and even bigger, I mean, the point would have been great on our point per game metric, and we're now kind of measuring Rotherham against Coventry rather than against Birmingham. Obviously, given the Birmingham win, that changes everything as well. But Coventry lost, so that is still a big miss by Smith. Or good save, whichever way you want to um, you want to slice it. There are the numbers. Um, so not much for Rotherham, but you have to factor in uh, a seventy-seven percent chance, a free shot at goal, like Ridley was saying earlier, from twelve yards late in the game should get you a point, shouldn't it? But I think overall, perhaps um, Millwall. Deserving it. No big chances, though. Um, there you go. Let's talk about Millwall briefly. Three wins in four. 55 on the table. Um, we were joking six, eight games ago about the record number of draws. And they just stopped drawing now. It's win, loss, win, loss, loss, win, loss, win, win. Um, and they're up to 55. So a point per game for the rest of the season now. 62 uh, for Millwall. Can they get... Can they get 10 points in the last seven and end on 65? I wonder. Can they do better than better than that? Um, we'll see. But Borough above them. Can they get above Borough? Can they get above Cardiff? Um, looks like a good run. Remember, Stoker on a nice little run as well. So a QPR. That's our beach ball area. They're all winning, aren't they? Our beach ball teams at the moment. So Rotherham still are the complete wild card. And they still do have a point per game because uh, it was 34 for 35. It's now 35 for 35. So they're still projecting 46 points, uh, Rotherham. Um, and who knows where that could leave them. Coventry are projecting more than 46 at the moment. Obviously, if they were to lose the next two games or score one point in the next three, they would drop below that. It's going to be very tight around that. 45 to 48 point mark, isn't it? Who can get there? And with Birmingham's little splurge of six points in three, does look like we're now talking about Rotherham and Coventry rather than Rotherham and Birmingham. But as Mr. E said in the chat, I reserve my right to change my mind um, after the next game. And remember that mental week for Rotherham where I can't remember all the games, but QPR then Coventry, and then Birmingham. I think in that order. And they obviously play the weekend as well. So that could be an incredible week. What if Rotherham score seven points across that week? Everything goes mental. Then let's have a look at your comments. 
Stoke Millwall on Monday. There you go. Someone's good runs ending there. Steve, uh, Wallace since the start of that. 90 guts, brilliant, and 18 assists. Excellent stuff. Um, after Stoke on Monday, we have, oh, ouch, Swans, Bees, Cherries and Hornets. Well, yeah. So maybe Stoke do go higher than um, higher than Millwall in the end. Uh, Jed and Bart show, never a pen. Pierce won the ball. Uh, Rotherham will stay up, but try convincing Ian of that. Is Ian in the chat? John Burkow. There you go. Order. Order. Um, always satisfying when penalties that should not be given are saved. Um, getting some players back from injury now, but just too late, I feel, this season. Uh, Stoke away on Easter Monday in the snow with both teams on the beach. That's tremendous. Um, Mickey, I'm not doing the derby later. I'm doing Brentford, Huddersfield, and then um, I am hanging with the missus for the rest of the day. I will review the game, though. I won't watch along, um, Mickey. Apologies. It's all championship, championship stuff. Uh, yes, Richard, I will do Brentford and Huddersfield. All go. Still think Rodham will go down due to the amount of games. It's funny, isn't it, Nat? Rodham will either go down due to the number of games and they'll get knackered or they'll stay up due to the number of games and they'll get momentum. Right, speaking of momentum, I need to get some momentum and get through this now. We're coming up the hour already. Bristol City nil, Stoke 2. Um, are we on the beach for this one, guys? Bristol City and Stoke, 14th and 11th. Uh, Stoke, nice run, 10 points in five. Where would Stoke have finished if Tyrese Campbell didn't get Injured. Hmm. Rub chin. Should do it rather than say it, shouldn't I? Uh, Bristol City, seven straight home defeats, which Annie tells me is a club record. Awful, awful home run for Bristol City. Good thing they won a few away games, isn't it? Uh, there are your teams. Bentley, Hunt, Mariapa, Callis, Rowe, Palmer, Semenyo, Masengo, Lansbury, Wells and Bell. A great shame because he was making his debut goes off injured. We're always behind. Uh, young players here coming through. Um, disappointing. Very disappointing for him. Good luck. Uh, Davies in goal for Stoke. Chester Suter, Bart. Norrington Davies and Smith. Powell. Um, kudos for Powell. I reckon a few of you are going to put him in your team of the season, Powell, aren't you? Um, for a goal-scoring central midfielder or number 10. Uh, Mikel Thompson, Fletcher, Brown. Uh, let's have a look at the goals. Uh can I find them? Uh, Powell uh, prodding that one in um, with his right foot there. And then, what about this, guys? Stephen Fletcher, who knew? Left foot, bending free kick into the top corner, swinging away from the keeper. Um, some great goals this week. I put in my poll. You can vote on Twitter. Icharia, great goal. Buendia, great goal. Fletcher, great goal. Wallace, great goal. Four really, really lovely goals. Um, for you to choose from this week. I'm sure someone will be outraged that I haven't included a goal scored by a player for the team that they support that wasn't as good as any of those goals. But, hey, what you're going to do, brother? Um, two big chances for Stoke. Um, that was all it took. Um, only one shot on target for Bristol City. Look at that. Exactly 392 passes apiece. Stoke winning tight game. They were doing that a lot before Campbell got injured, weren't they? So Stoke 11th, and judging what our Millwall friends were just saying, Millwall might have a trickier run in. Um, so maybe Stoke um, might be a, a good shout for top 10 there. And I think Michael O'Neill needed this run now, needs to get in the top 10, um, given Stoke's status and spend um, over the past seasons. And Stoke and Swansea now without parachute payments from next season as well. They can join the bun fight doesn't matter how much Bet365 money you've got with your 13 million quid FFP rolling limit, does it? Bristol City, um, I, I don't know what's going on there, whether um, w how close Pearson is getting to what he wants to do, um, <clears throat> whether you asked him if he closed the doors now and um, stuck the 49 points and didn't play any of the last seven games and just worked with his players, whether he'd take that now. But yeah, they need to do something about the home form as well, which is just horrifically bad at the moment, isn't it? Uh, we were shocking to watch. There was about two half chances for us and we didn't mark our uh, box. Stoke, full value for their three points. Need some stability and give Pearson a contract. Um, Sun Lounger and Parasol on the score sheet. Nice. Fair to say Bristol City 
I've had a season to forget. Yes, yeah, it's a bit meh, isn't it? Meh. Um, I'm unable to persuade any that Pearson may not be the answer. Well, we'll we'll find out. Nick Powell's out of contract at the end of the season, is he? Oh, someone will snaffle him up, won't they? Bring back Streaky Lee. Streaky Lee at the top of League One with um, Sunderland doing very nicely. Can the season just end now? That was what I said. There you go. Liam's in that camp, isn't he? 13 players up. Yeah. Um, big, big job now. Um, Stoke Finance is a problem. God, did you see um, uh, Kieran Maguire's tweets, uh, Mr. E? Yeah, they're going to need um, some clever bean counters there to make this all add up going forward. Um, let's move on. QPR 3, Coventry 0. Um, while we're doing this, can anyone give me any numbers on QPR's last 15 or 16 games? Um, I bet they're close to two points per game for around 14 or 15 or 16 games. Can anyone add it up for us? They're, they're in really good nick, uh, QPR. Um, I suppose the bigger story really is Coventry now because um, we're, you know, we're looking at QPR as having a good end to the season and uh, moving into that middle um, part of the table comfortably. However, Coventry, now with Birmingham six points across the last three, Coventry, this is a concern um, for them. They're still above a point per game, but could they drop? And how vital that Thursday night mental week Rotherham uh, are having. They play Coventry at the New York. So all eyes on that one. I'm sure we'll be watching um, on a watch along for that one. And perhaps both teams mo might not have many more points than they've got at the moment. So it could be a really key game when we get to that point. Uh, so there's your Rangers team. Lumley, Dickie, Cameron, Barbe, Wallace, Kake, Field, Johansson, Chair, Willock, Austin. Uh, I might need to take a sip of a drink. My, my throat is getting tired. Apologies. Stick with me, um, guys. I've only got to do a watch along after this. Good thing I've got an entire crate of Pepsi Max behind me. There you go. That feels better. Right. Morosi in goal. Rose, Wilson, Hyam, De Costa, McCallum. Harmer, James, Shipley, Allen, Godden for Kov. Um, here are the goals. And check out this first goal. This is a great goal. Um, Chair comes in off the left, plays a lovely reverse ball on the run. First time cross. And then Willock heads it in off the post. It's literally one of those goals where you look at it and say, he did that perfectly, he did that perfectly, and he did that perfectly. It's a great goal by um, QPR with Chair pulling the strings there. Own goal here from Rose on the near post from the corner. He's going to get ahead on that and it's going to go in the side netting on the far post. And this would also have been a really good goal if Morosi hadn't have fumbled it into the net. Great run from Chair. Dribble, 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 dribble. Shot straight at the keeper. And Morosi, who I, I think he must have only just come in. It feels like Wilson has played for a few months now, doesn't it? Someone will correct me on that. And it's 3 0 uh, QPR. Commentary's away form. Is bad, isn't it? I won't look at the numbers if it's three, not four big chances to zero. Yeah, I couldn't resist it. There you go. Uh, look at the away form now. And there's the issue for Kov. Um, only 11 points away from home from 19 games. Uh, that alongside 28 at home from or at St Andrews from 19. So now Coventry are one point above a point per game. Rotherham are at a point per game. So if that maintains, Coventry finished with 47 and Rotherham finished with 46. It's going to be so tight and they play each other. Um, a win does a lot, though. And if you look, Coventry do have a game in hand on Birmingham, um, not on Huddersfield. Um, and as we always mention, Rotherham have 100 games in hand on everybody. So um, let's have a look at your comments. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, um, Thank you, Gazza. Ten wins, two draws and four losses in 2021. That's superb. So 32 points from 16. Yeah, two points per game over 16 games. I was I was bang on, wasn't I? Um, there you go. Thanks, Noah. 32 from 16. Brilliant. Um, 2.4. Looking good. Yeah, looking good. Uh, best first half of the season uh, for QPR. Stop it. Lee Wallace, three assists in, Lee in three games. Are you lot? There you go. I, I want Noah and I want QPR forever. Any other Rangers fans in here, I need you all to issue a public apology 
to Mr. Lee Wallace, who is now the best wing back in the world, isn't, isn't he? We'll await in the chat your public apologies, your groveling apologies to Mr. No, it's good, good to see because he wasn't playing well. Um, and QPR does acknowledge that. What a turnaround. Exciting times. Commentary of Dune, pitiful away. Um, and they have Bristol City, Barnsley, Preston and Millwall at home. Um, 45 won't be enough. They need to win an away game. Let's see, Chris. Let's see. Always a good um, rule of thumb, isn't it? Right. Derby 2, Luton nil. We've got two to go here. Uh, it was a good day for Birmingham yesterday. It was also a good day for Derby, wasn't it? They got their first win in eight, I think. Uh, someone will correct me. There you go. Humble pie. A public apology here to, to Lee Wallace from all the Rangers fans. <laughs> I sincerely apologise for not believing that Lee Wallace was as good as Roberto Carlos. Well said, you guys. Brilliant stuff uh, from the Rangers fans. They should be happy, shouldn't they? Great run for Warburton and Rangers. Anyway, let's talk Derby, who really needed this win. They really, really needed this, didn't they? Maybe loot and a um, uh, beach fodder here because they, they look nice and safe, don't they? Luton on 50. So um, Derby moved to 43. So key, key um, win. This one, there are your teams. Uh, Marshall, Wisdom Clark for Scythe, Lawrence Byrne. They'd Lawrence play wing back. No way. Any Derby fans in the chat? Did Lawrence play wing back? Uh, Shinny, Bird, Sibley, Gregory, Waghorn. Uh, for Luton, the masters of the 1 0 away win, uh, Sluger, Clark, Naismith, Pearson, Bree, and Panzu, Ray, Jewsbury Hall, Tunnicliffe, Adebayu, and Cornick. Uh, here is the opening goal. Uh, Lee Gregory sticks that home. But look, that's excellent from Waghorn. First time um, controls that across the box to give Gregory the tap in. Uh, penalty here. Uh, Lawrence, I think it's is it Glenn Ray. Um, I can't, it's too blurry, isn't it? Um, Lawrence, nice manoeuvre on him. Um, turns inside, outside USA. And down he goes. And Shinny uh, finds the corner. Spot the ball there. It's the ticker in the way. If I move the ticker, there it goes. You can see it now. Uh, Shinny sticks it home for 2-0. I will say Adebayo had a very big chance at 1-0, I think, for Luton. Um, but Derby get the clean sheet and get the win. A bit more like um, Rooney's Derby that we were getting excited about when they were doing this a little bit more often. In terms of the numbers, though, not massively sustainable. They did concede three big chances in this game, so... Maybe uh, Luton for once, not their hyper-efficient selves away from home. And Derby, really important win for them, especially given um, others beneath them losing on the same week. So Derby are eight points clear of the relegation zone. They have 43. They have seven to play. Um, a point per game for Derby for the rest of the season, which is not unattainable, takes them to 50. And are you seriously telling me that um, more than um, the teams below them are going to get to 50 points? I don't believe it. I um, I think Derby are looking good. Uh, a win and a draw takes Derby to 47 um, across the last seven games. So good result there. Luton, um, I suppose they deserve their, their beach status here. Um, they'd love to get... Closer to 60, though, wouldn't they? Let's see how many more points Luton can stick on the ball. But they've already hit 50 this season. Uh, Lewis, crucial win for us. Um, we played 4-4-2. Lawrence Sibley wide. Waghorn and Gregory up top. Lawrence Superb on his return. Good news. I can do chapter and verse, uh, Lewis, on Tom Lawrence and Martin Waghorn. Put it that way. Yeah, really good, solid performance. Great result. Other teams' results even better. Yeah, I didn't believe it win. It said Lawrence playing wing back, not having it. Uh, Luton just didn't show up. Some ridiculous off the ball antics. Oh, I'm not getting involved in this. Um, looked desperate for the win. Yes, they did. Um, uh, good, good Friday all around. I said all season we won't go down. Stand by it. Took our chances at key times. There you go. That's the deal, isn't it? Luton had chances, didn't take them, did they? Uh, first goal was always going to be vital here. Yeah, I agree with that, Chris. Luton have been um, mega when they get the first goal, uh, haven't they? Um, massive win that says Dave can't see us getting anything from Reading away and Norwich at home. Uh, lost Waghorn and Greg with hamstring what tears or just little strains, um, Dave. Um, 
Need some forwards, uh, Darby. It's been a problem all season. You would think Derby four or five more points from seven is going to be plenty enough. And look, slog fight beneath them, you know, everyone might stop everybody else, mightn't they? So, uh, right, finally, Wickham one, Blackburn nil is our last one here. Good win for uh, Wickham. Um, and you tell me in the chat, how much pressure, give me a percentage number, how much pressure is Tony Mowbray under here? It feels like we're going, um, we're going into the 60, 60 to 70 percent pressure rating here for Tony Mowbray now as Blackburn's season tails off. Um, nice little run from Wickham. I sound so patronising when I say that. Sorry, um, Wickham fans. I think seven points in four. It's just all a little bit too little, too late. Look at the attack momentum for the second half. How many games have Blackburn done this season where they've like had the ball for the entire second half chasing the lead and not scored? Feels like that's been five to ten games this season where that pattern has been. You could see something akin to that graph um, over and again. Oh, dear. Uh, there are your teams. Stockdale in goal for Wickham. Excuse me. McCarthy, Grimm and Knight, Jacobson on your dimmer. Mehmeti, Musque, Gape, Thompson, Ikpezu for Blackburn, Kaminsky, Rankin, Costello, Lenihan, Harwood, Bellis, Douglas, Holtby, Tribal, Rothwell, Elliot, Brereton, Gallagher. How long has Armstrong been out for now as well? I know he can be a bit um, hit and miss, but they've certainly missed him, haven't they? Here's the goal. Um, classic one, this, wasn't it? Um, get all the big guys to run. Send Fred Onyedima into the middle of the goal. And whilst everybody keeps an eye on all the big guys, Onyedima just jumps up and heads the ball into the net. Clever set play from Jacobson and Onyedima there. And Wickham get the victory. Um, three big chances for Blackburn as well. Just hasn't clicked, has it, for Rovers this season. Even with Elliot and Armstrong and Rothwell and all of that perceived attacking quality, just haven't piece the whole thing together. They've got 46, um, but do we expect Forrest to possibly finish above Blackburn? I think maybe we do, don't we? Uh, so they could go down to 16th, although, um, well, let's see what Bristol City and Luton do for the remainder of the season if they're on the beach. Uh, Wickham, 30. So, I mean, the gap is not as bad as it has been. Nine points gap, but that's still relegation with three games to go as things stand. But, I mean, look down the bottom there, seven points from the last four. Nobody else can better that up to, Jesus, um, QPR. So they're basically over a four-game sample size, the best team in the bottom half. Wickham, we'll give them that one. Small mercies um, down at the bottom. Uh, Matt, 0% on Mowbray from Venke. Is any other club I think he'd been sacked four games again? Well, there we go. If he's their, if he's their man, 72%, 99%. What is that with Blackburn? I don't know, Ridley. And the stupid thing about Blackburn is I watch him play sometimes and it feels like it would not take much of a click for them to win a load of games. And I'm talking about a load of games. It feels like Norwich with Farker, pre-Buendia and post-Buendia. Do you know what I mean? Where they were passing the ball around and having loads of possession and not winning many games. And then post-Buendia, oh, <laughs> it works. Do you know what I mean? It feels... I'm not saying Blackburn are one player away from winning the league, but do you know what I mean? It feels like there's a lot of it that looks like they're doing it right. Um but <laughs> vitally, they're not. It, I'm, I'm talking myself into circles here, but you know what I mean, don't I? Uh, can Wickham strew a few wins together at the death? Possibly. Yeah, if they play some on the beach teams, uh, Mowbray 75% chance. There we go. I think Mowbray has done a question of timing. Uh, Blackburn 22nd in the last 10 matched. Oof. Um, who's below them, uh, Mr. E, in that last 10 table? Uh, Robert is he's thanking me. I am responsible for the Birmingham win. Thank you very much, Robert. Five pound. A five pound super chat like Derby without Bielik, yeah, 100%. Uh, I can see Ainsworth getting a decent championship job, been impressed, yeah. And if you're in the championship and you don't have parachute money or relegated Premier League players, 
and you want to play straightforward competitive football, I don't see why Ainsworth would be the most terrible hire. Um, outplayed by Wickham, says Matt yesterday. Final third, we were careless again. Uh, Adam Armstrong effect. Um, how many goals do I think Tony can score this season? Um, regular season, 32, I think. Um, unless he gets injured. Uh, I think you're yeah, spot on, Ari Blackburn. Chris would know, he's a Norwich fan, no, um, about the Norwich twist. Um, they're close to being good. So Wednesday in Preston. So Wickham, <laughs> Wickham aren't bottom of that list anyway. Right. Thank you, guys. Now, in this incessant Easter weekend, I will now disappear, go and talk to Shaley, have a bath possibly, and I'm going to reappear at 12.20 for Huddersfield versus... Brentford and then I'm done for the day and then we're going to be back at 1 p.m tomorrow I think we're doing 1 p.m for the preview for Easter Monday we'll, we'll stop on Wednesday um basically so um I just want to read that one from Luke um Wickham have Luton and Rotherham next two games if they win both um do they have a chance of, <laughs> they win both yeah they do um that would be three straight wins and yeah um of course they do and against um if they win against Rotherham. So, right. Thank you. Sorry, I just wanted to throw that one in. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Let's give Russ a big thanks. Our uh, fan sponsor, fan now, friends, but Ben's terrible taste in football teams. Um, I am going to be back. Um, you can go, but be back soon. What is that from? Dib -a -dib 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 -dib. Oh, Oliver or something. I don't know why I'm singing that. Um, there you go. Takes all sorts, doesn't it? So I'm going to be back for Huddersfield-Brentford in a bit, and we'll try and get a review out for Leeds and Sheffield United, which is a dearly departed derby later on. Good. I'm still sane. I'm still calm. I'm keeping up on this mental Easter weekend. Thank you, everybody, for watching over and out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.